Good morning. I mean, good evening. I'm so used to morning. Can everybody hear me? Okay. First thing before we get started, can everybody turn their cell phones off? Off, off, because it'll interfere with your cameras. And we're on the internet live. Hello, all you. How do you say it, Mom? Precious people out there in internet land. Huh? It will. Oh, maybe it won't. Okay. Um, I, I want to make a few announcements, but should we pray first and then do announcements? Okay. Lord Jesus, how we just humbly bow before you. Our heart's just so full of love and grace and joy, and it's only you being manifested through us. We just praise you, Lord. We give you total and complete control of this meeting. We know, Lord, you already are, and we just expect to hear from you in so many different ways that we're all going to be just so amazed and so enlightened and so filled with your spirit that will never be the same when we leave. Lord, we just praise you. We praise you for every person that's been a part of it. We just praise you for the people out there in Internet land that are watching us. We just praise you, Lord. We just personally thank you, thank you, thank you for your precious people. And we thank you for their ears that can hear the truth. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Hello to all God's precious people out there in, <laughs> in conference land or web land or internet land. Hello. We just welcome all of you all. We just feel like we've got the biggest conference in the world. Because it's not just, you can't hear me. Okay. Yeah. We feel like we've got the b biggest conference in the world because it's worldwide. <laughs> How about that? All right. So now we've got a lot, around 80 people that signed up. So not everybody's here tonight. But this is pretty much of a welcoming. We just welcome. We just appreciate every single one of you. Hello, Cheryl. And I just want to kind of go around and do a little introduction. I've got little stories about probably each one of you all. Whether My children have learned this from the very beginning that I'm kind of a tell-all person. Now, I'm not going to really tell bad things, but I want, you know, <laughs> you know, just little love stories because every time I see anybody walking up this driveway, coming to this conference, my heart just leaps because it's just Jesus walking up here and we always say that, but it's not a cliche. It's a real heartfelt meaning inside of us that we really are seeing. And we're bumping it. We're, what does Fran say? When Jesus he comes up on himself, he gets excited. He gets excited. <laughs> when Jesus comes up on himself, he gets excited. And that's the truth. And, of course, that's our message. What I want to do first. And, Dave, you want to say something before I go introduce yeah. everybody? All right. I just want to thank all of the people that helped us. This is just absolutely, we could not do this alone. There is no way we could do it alone. We've got people praying for this all over the world, really. We've got people, and we honor them. We want to honor them. What? Okay, how, how about that? It ought to echo because it's like I've got two things going here. Okay. Okay. Is that good, Dave? Okay. 
All right, so I want to thank, first of all, Jenny was the first one that came. I always say I would never do these things without Jenny. There's just something so calming, so wonderful about having Jenny. And I always have a breakdown sometime during the preparation time. And I've always got her, you know, to, and she doesn't care if I have a breakdown. She just lets me and she doesn't try to fix me or anything. And she just goes on and does what she has to, what I'm breaking down about, she's already done. So <laughs> I just I just want you all to know our Jenny. And we're going to talk during the weekend about the women's Pauly's Island things that we do in South, Car in South Carolina, Pauly's Island. We're going to talk about that. Jenny hosts that. So let me just start here with our Charlene. Charlene's from Louisville. Charlene Brown, she first heard me on the radio. And uh, she came to a Bible study and then left thought, well, we ran her off, that we wouldn't see her. A year later, she came back, and we've just been heartfelt, cute friends together ever since. <laughs> and, she, and this little lady, Phyllis, she, they, go, they go to the same church. This little lady, she, uh, Charlene's been saying, Phyllis, you've got to come out there. You've got to go out there, Phyllis. No, no, she's not doing it. She's, she didn't do it. She, she got the victory, though, in her heart. She knew she was going to do it. Charlene goes off to, to Arizona, and I send out invitations, and she comes, and she didn't even know it was the same place that Charlene had tried to get her to come to all this time. And there, and there she says, who are you? Sylvia, oh, my gosh, this is Charlene trying to. So this is our Phyllis, and Phyllis called and says, you know what? You got such, so much Jesus in your house. I want people to be in my house. So anybody at your conference that you want to put in my house have got three beds. And we've, we've just barely met this precious lady, and she's already done that, so we just thank you. This little Karen from New York and her friend Rose, Karen found my book in a, what, thrift store? Found my book in a thrift store and read it. You know, what, what gets thrown away, some people appreciate. So anyway, <laughs> and then she brought this little, this precious one, Rose, and uh, you both are from New York. Did You flew? Oh, yes. You didn't drive. You flew. Okay. Next year. Next year. Let me go around here. These, this is the Sewards. And today this is Jim and his son Tom. They are talented in every way there is to be talented. But most of all, this afternoon I sat down and talked with this precious man. And I just thought, I just celebrated him. And, and the beauty of what God brings out of him through his art and the art that you see in the house it comes right straight out of his, his, his spirit. It really does. And he, he studies, but yet it really comes out. He, and what did one of the people tell you that yours was the closest to what the scripture is saying? The company I work for is uh, Somerset Fine Art out of Houston, Texas. They're a printing uh, company. They pay me royalties to reproduce my artwork. And a lot of the franchise galleries, which are all over the country and part of the world, uh, are owned by Jewish people. And uh, it, it amazes me that with all the research I've done, the... Uh, Jewish people have said this is the most authentic presentation they've had, but they said it. I didn't say that. <laughs> but yet he's been doing this art for years and years and years and years, but the Lord has just now brought it to the service so that people really truly un uh, appreciate him, and you all will appreciate. And his wonderful son, who we've known as almost as long as Jim, maybe not quite, no, probably not, but anyway, he's just as talented as an artist, and they're also musicians as well. And you're, we're going to hear some music from them. And we talk some on the telephone, back and forth a little bit on the telephone. And this precious one, Patty Durbin, came from the West Coast. She originally came through Jenny, good friend of Jenny's, and originally Kentucky, Berean, I think, Berea, Kentucky. And then she came from the West Coast and came here to Louisville. And we thank, we're glad you came, Patty. And she's she's been here about two years now, right? Okay. This one right here, you all, you all get to know her. This is Tracy. 
Tracy Taylor. Her, her maiden name was Duke. Her mother, maybe you've seen her mother over here, Jewel Duke. She's one of the most profound people I've ever met in my life. Every word that comes out of her mouth is just like you want to take a notepad and write it down. It's true. It is true. Get to know her. She, she's got some great, a great testimony about a child that was born to her that was a vegetable. And she just simply started hearing from God and hearing how to speak to that child's brain and call it forth alive when it was really non-functioning at all. And the child is now in what grade? The fifth grade. And she couldn't even suck when she was first born. This woman, she's a great, great woman. And you know what? I met her when she was 18, and she was from the holiness movement. And so they, she wore, she didn't, never wore pants until she came into my house. And uh, she was scared to death and guilty, thinking that, oh, my gosh, I'm sinning. And I took her to the mall and bought her first makeup, so I'm the reason that she's gone downhill ever since. <laughs> These wonderful people over here are from Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, this is Stephen uh, Dixon. You all met, know Marion and Gray Dixon. This is their son, Stephen. And also their Bible study, Jeff and Linda. Say your last name. Walensky? Walensky. And their mo his mother has been teaching a Bible study for some time, but all she could teach for a long time was Galatians 2.20. And so one of the guys, and there's a lot of guys in this Bible study, and one of the guys says, but you can't build everything around Galatians 2.20, can't you? I mean, come on. There's got to be more than that. And so um, the Lord sent Scott and I down there, and so we brought forth, we didn't even know that, but our message brought forth Galatians 2.20 out of most of the New Testament. So they, they got it clear. And uh, and the Lord has, you know, I think you all have been listening to the MP3, uh, the the Internet, Internet. Who, how many of you all listening to the Internet radio and all that? You all listen to that? Yeah. Well, they are listening to it. And this is Marion and Gray's son. He's a pilot. And we're so happy that you all could come. Thank you. Thank you. And I think Taylor, I was kind of expecting him to come. So I hope he can come next time, maybe. Okay, this is Mary Enix with an S. Yes. <laughs> and her wonderful little daughter, 16, from Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia. And she, they, she, they've heard us on the radio. So they heard us on the radio and contacted and first came to Margaret Lester's uh, woman's, well, there was a man there, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's how we met Mary. And... Uh, so you've been to several things before. Uh, just that one and, and listen to you on the radio and now the Internet. Yeah, now the Internet. Now the Internet's the way to go, folks. Okay, this is Mason right here. I don't know you too well, but you're from Ohio. And his wife called me and said, can you find him a place? So we did. We, the guys have a house up here, and their guys are all sleeping up there. So we're glad to have you, Mason. We're glad to have you. Okay, back here. we got some California guys. This is Matt right here, and he belongs with Bill. And uh, wait a minute, Paul Stucan. i got a story to tell about Paul Stucan and Chuck. And um, am I missing somebody? Okay. And Matt came a couple of years ago, and uh, you were, like, in Kansas at the time or something. Yeah, I know James is from Kansas, but you weren't in California the first time you came, were you? You came, you came to California when I met you there. Okay. All right. All right. But then you came here. I didn't come here. You've never come here? Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. This is my good friend, Jim Fowler. And he's such a good friend. I never call him Jim. I always call him Jim Fowler. That's <laughs> first and last name. I have no idea why I do that. I just always do that. <laughs> it does. He is our, he, this is a great, great man. He is a theologian, a friend. Um, he 
we went to Wil- I went to Wilmington uh, some months back and met a missionary that said, you all can't prove that there's no independent self from the Bible. And uh, you can't theologically prove that. And I said, he wasn't going to take, you know, I didn't have any, like I say, power of persuasion, so I wasn't going to try to. But I thought, oh, well, we've got a theologian who's done it for sure. (laughs) And we love you, Jim. Jim and I have been on trips together. We've taught together. We went to Africa. We went to we went to uh, Germany, and um, maybe sometime we'll go another time. He was here last year. From that time, he's had some health issues, but the Lord has totally restored him. There's many of you all that prayed for this man, so we're just thankful that God has restored him and brought him back to health, and he's better than ever. A lot of times when people have heart bypasses, they come back better. This is Chuck. He's also from California. He's not been here. Pasadena, right? Or, okay, near Pas- near Bill. Bill, I'll get you you. And so, Chuck, known, known you for a long, long time. Yeah. For a long time. Okay, we'll just leave it there. And every, <laughs> and every time I go out to California, I always see Chuck and... You know, we always hang out at the Good Earth or one of those good st- good places and our Starbucks or somewhere. And, you know, there's always new questions and new things, but God has given him a great word. And these California guys, I don't know if you've seen the agenda, Bill, but Saturday night, Bill's guys are going to be on. Bill's boys are going to be on. So you don't think of anything. Don't try to think of anything. Okay, this is my Sharon Roy. She came from, um, where'd you come from? California. Where in California? Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, California. And about almost 20 years ago now, almost 20 years ago, she lives just about five miles from here in my parents' house, the house that I lived in when I was just 14 years old. And uh, She's one of my dearest, dearest friends. I, I, I always say I don't know what I'd ever do without Sharon. Sharon's the one that's going to be doing the books, and she she's a counselor. She used to come here and just analyze everything to pieces, and I'd say, Anal- your mind just is driving you crazy and <laughs> because you just analyze. And I thought, you know, you analyze is almost anti-faith. <laughs> and so, you know, and I said, you know what? In psychology, she was strong in psychology. Well, okay. I said, but let's let that be salt and pepper, not the main course. <laughs> okay. Jesus did the main course, and we're going And But this woman has great wisdom and is a, is a wonderful counselor, and she's got many people that she counsels and talks to. This is my wonderful, wonderful friend, Margaret Lester. She's from Martinsville, Virginia, and I've known Margaret since 1970. She says 74. I thought it was 73. But anyway, we won't debate over that. But it was years and years ago when I was just coming out of my dark night, could hardly make it. And this woman, I bonded with her because she was the only one I knew that understood why, why any of us have to go through a dark time. Because she herself had gone through her own dark time, and God was bringing her out. And so I, she was solace to me, and she has been ever since. And we are, like, joined at the hip. I mean, wherever I can't, I don't want to go anywhere or do anything without my Margaret. So I love her dearly, and we are in ministry together. We have been for years, and my Margaret is just a jewel. So Bill. How long have I known you, Bill? I don't know. Let's not count. <laughs> this is BB, Bill Byer. And, uh, oh, my, he really is one of the guys that you hang out with at the Good Earth in California. He is somebody to hang out with. And you know what? He's like Elijah. Because Elijah, or was it Elisha, that had the seminary, the, the guys that always followed him around, around the prophet school, the, the prophets that followed Elisha around. Well, all, if, if you go to California, you will also see Bill's, Bill's boys. And, those, and he's got a seminary going 
a, teaching union truths, you know, in every Starbucks and Good Earth and <laughs> And that's Bill. Bill is a, is a tennis pro. He's also an actor. And uh, he might do some little skits for us and entertain us a little bit. <laughs> Bill and I talk on the phone as much as, not as much as I'd like, but when we do, it's just, we just blast each other to pieces because <laughs> he's just so full of the Spirit. One time he called me and he says, I know, I know, we know this, we know this same thing, we've been teaching it forever, but it's just blasting me today. <laughs> so, so I said, it's got to be revelation, because it was something that you learned in your head, it wouldn't be blasting you, because we'd be saying, oh, okay, it's the same old, same old. But if, it, but if it's revel, uh, revelation, it is absolutely a living reality that blasts you every time you think about it. So that's him. <laughs> this is this guy, you want to get to know him. <laughs> He, he, he'll, if you don't, if you never met Norman Grubb, when he starts doing his Norman Grubb, you'll, you have met him. <laughs> okay, this is Cheryl Humphrey. She's, uh, she's from Cary, North Carolina. And this little woman, we, we didn't meet on the radio. She had a friend that heard me on the radio that was listening to Paul, uh, Charles Stanley and, fell on our, our, the liberating secret, and all of a sudden she stopped listening to Charles Stanley and she was listening to us. Her name was Helen Cooper. Hello, Helen. I hope you're seeing us. And she's a friend. Cheryl is a friend. of, And she's a precious, precious sister, and she's a teacher. We have some up-and-coming young women that are teachers, and men too as well. I mean, Paul's got his seminary. Well, you know, we kind of do too. We women do too, <laughs> Bill. Okay. So, and she, she's one of them, and she's a, she's a great woman. She taught last year, didn't you, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. And uh, she homeschools two sons, lives in Cary, and she's had me at her church a couple of times. So we just appreciate Cheryl. All right, Paul Stucan. Oh, my gosh. I didn't think I'd ever get him here. <laughs> I've been talking to him forever and ever. Let me tell you, the first time he came to my house, my Susan, now you'll see her tomorrow. She looks like me, except she's a lot younger, of course. Okay. She, uh, I had, she, she didn't want somebody staying in her room, and I, I was trying to prepare. Susan, come on, you know, this guy's coming to our house, and we need to have him in your room. Can you go spend the night with one of your friends or something? And she said, oh, Mom. I said, Susan, he's a hunk. <laughs> so I was thinking, I was trying to convince her, <laughs> that, you know, that, and so anyway, now this was like, how many years ago? About 20 years. <laughs> okay, 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so 20 years ago. So anyway, he, and she's like 17, and she's sitting there, and I'm, we're all, the three of us are sitting there, and, and he and I are talking, and she looks over and she says, did you know that my mama thinks you're a hunk? And I go, gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Paul is a wonderful man of God. He, he and Bill were linked forever and ever. And they used to go to the same church, Harvest Rock Church out there in Pasadena. It's the big prophetic church that's really, I mean, it's probably known all over the world. And he still goes to that. You go to a satellite church, satellite of this, the Harvest Rock Church. But anyway, Paul, married, have two children. Two children. Okay. I want you all just, you all get to love each other as much as I love you all. <laughs> love each other. Okay. This is Patty Mossop. And Patty, Patty, uh... I've not known Patty very long. She's actually known Brian and Tandy longer, and uh, but she's heard this since 1980 sometime and then kind of fell away for a while, and now she's an avid Liberating Secret listener. She, her son has hooked her up with the MP3 and uh, iPods or whatever they are, and just like my son has hooked me up with all that, and she listens to him, and she's, she's being blessed. All right, this is our Victoria. 
Oh, my goodness. Is this a beautiful child? This is Victoria Downs. And she's, are you 10 years old? She uh, comes with her precious mother, Deborah. Deborah came to me, came to us through Margot's mother. Margot's mother used to uh, walk with her. Margot's mother, Libby, has gone to be with the Lord now. Used to walk with Deborah. And Deborah came out here and came to Bible study. She read my book. And she sat down and she said, Oh, Sylvia, do you know you're a great woman of God? And I said, I do. <laughs> I said, but do you know you are too? And she said, Oh, <laughs> that's the point. That's the point. We all need to know that. But this woman radiates the Lord Jesus, and she she's my precious daughter. I'm her mom. That's, that's right. I'm mom. And uh, love this woman. She We have a church service, and she preached her first sermon at our church service to the Internet several we, about a month or so ago. That's right. She's coming back to do do it because we, we're going to take our time listening to her. She's got lots. She also is a teacher. This is our Norma Mauser. This is travel option. This is our travel agent. Norma and I have known each other since she was, she was 11 and I was 13 or 14. We're trying to figure out how much. Younger, I am, did she? No. Oh, oh, okay. But I, we've known each other that long. Margaret, uh, um, what's your name? Norma, thank you. Norma has a wonderful, wonderful ministry as a travel agent. She gets to talk to all of you all and arrange all of your all schedules and interconnect you all. And the first year, I put her on the invitational letter. The second year, for some reason, I left her off. That year, she called me furious. Sylvia, you are not going to do this to me anymore. She, she was furious. She said, I love doing this. This is what I can do. This is my ministry. And, I mean, I couldn't make her okay anymore. I just kept trying to get her okay, and I couldn't because she was making a point. She dearly loves everyone. This woman, the thing I love most about her is the way she loves people. And you know what? Sometimes I try to call her and with a problem, and she flips it over so fast that I can't even have a problem with her. Because she, cause, cause she just flips the pancake so fast. I learned it from you. Oh, Okay. This is Janet North. Met her through Sharon Skaggs. And um, she's actually president of Sharon Skaggs Fan Club, really. And uh, I met her at the Grand Ole Opry. Some time back, I went there with, to visit with Sharon and Cheryl. And they were here a couple years ago. And uh, so that's when I met this wonderful woman. She's been to uh, Steve Pettit's conference before, and she came with Sharon, and we came and had a counseling session, so we won't talk about that, but <laughs> it was it was really great. <laughs> and she she had a real release in the spirit, so we're, we're just for this precious woman, and we know that God's going to meet her and her friend. And who is this little friend? This is Molly. She's from Minnesota, and I don't know Molly, so we'll get to know you, Molly. Okay? And this little lady, Marcia Smith, I've never met her, but she wrote me. We, went, we were on the air in Kansas City some years back, about two, two years back, and she used to listen to us every week, or every day, every weekday. And then all of a sudden, we were gone. Well... She could not stand it because evidently the Lord was really blessing her by the radio program. So um, she wrote me a letter and said, where, where did you all go? And I said, well, you know what? The funds kind of backed off in that area. So, you know, we took that from the Lord. She said, well, I can't stand that. So I, I said, well, I'm just going to send her. So I send her a care package, which I often do, with all the old radio programs. So I, she a whole huge stack of radio programs. So she's been listening to them ever since. And this is the first time she's come alone 
on a trip by herself all the way from Kansas City. So that we're just so thankful for her, for you. Whoops. This is B. <laughs> well, yeah, but B, I saw Bill Bass and Brian Courtney and, and Tandy, so it's B, B, and T. <laughs> you know, the bank. <laughs> so can we draw money, <laughs> y'all? Can we draw money? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Brian, I've known since 1979. Is that right? Did I get it right this time? Okay, he usually gets mad at me because I never can remember that. Brian and I teach on the radio together. We have been friends forever and ever. I invited him to my house because um, I had a, a seminary student that I was teaching in a Sunday school class, and I thought, oh, this student doesn't hear what I'm saying. I need somebody to come to town to tell him what oh, you mm, I did not no no the the deal was I loved this man so much and I knew as soon as I told him what I really believed I would run him off and I couldn't stand it and so I just asked the Lord please send me somebody that can tell him because I can't do it I, I just don't have the courage please send me somebody he sent me Brian I'm the bouncer. but wait a minute I, sure enough, I lost the friend, the seminary student, but I gained this friend for life. And he is my dear, dear friend. That if I ever have any counseling or anything that I need, I call this man. He is a great, wise, wise man and a great poet, a great writer. He's, um, I don't know what I'd ever do without B. He's lived in my house almost six months of his life. No. No. in your house over a year. A year. Okay. Added it all of us. Oh, okay. A year. We don't have any grandchildren, and they live in Boone, the, grand, the, the granddaughters. Okay. Yeah. Tandy's mother, Mimi, is the matriarch of Union Life. She's the oldest living woman of Union Life, and uh, the one that's probably brought all of us. Is that right? Can we say that? And we just, we, we know she's not here. This is the first year that she's not been so able to. It's sad that she's not here. And she said to give everyone her love. She just hated not to be able to come. Give everyone a kiss. Oh. That's your oh. kiss for Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody. Mimi right now in, in body is very fragile. And I had a friend that came to a, like a woman's group that we have, and she sat right by her feet. She did not, had never met Mimi, and Mimi just said a few little words because she was very fragile and weak. And this woman was so discerning, she said to me later, I think that woman is the most powerful woman I've ever sat by. Now, you have to have the Spirit of God to be able to see that because she's very, very weak and old and feeble right now. But she has the power of God. And right now she's resting at home and her works are following her. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Okay, this is my son Dave. He's the technical part of our... Um, this is why you all can hear us on the Internet and you you can download all the CDs. And um, he's the reason that Norman was put on CD because a lot of the old Norman tapes were all, you know, just audio tapes and they are corrupt after a while, you know. So he digitized them all and now we have them forever. And we just thank the Lord for him. He's our oldest son, Dave. And uh, if you've read my book, you'll, you'll know Dave. <laughs> <laughs> And, and with a couple of relapses along the way. But 
the relapses are only, you know, the devil knocking at the door that only really sets the course for God, for what God is doing. And God has set this man on fire for what we've got to give out to the world. So dad, his dad and I are just so thankful for him. And we, you get to know him. He, he's going to be up. He's going to be speaking. Yeah. This is my Diane. Uh, she's my older of two daughters, and her other sister's 10 years younger. And uh, I'm just really proud of her. And how she said to me when she was 17 years old, Mama, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. But right now I'm 17, so don't talk to me about all that God stuff. <laughs> And that was good. That was good. I didn't need to talk to her about all that God stuff. And you know what? I've known uh, the truths of union since she was a little girl. And God, for I mean, I, I can just give God the credit. He gave me the wisdom not to inundate my children with all that, but to let the Holy Spirit in his own way come through in everyone and bring them up as he wanted to bring them up and raise them in the Spirit. And praise the Lord. She, she, she has done, you're going to see the work that she's done. She, it, I, I just kind of flipped out this week and all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, it's Diane that's doing all the work. So I, I just thank her. She has two daughters. You're going to meet Rebecca. She's going to be singing and also Margot's daughter. And she has a little son and her husband, Mike, came and helped us, didn't he? And Katie. And Katie. Okay, Di. Uh, Kathy. She's going to be your MC. This, this Kathy, this is Kathy Chevis. She is going to be your MC. She is Jenny's sister, Kathy. And for three years, I've been begging her, please come and do this. Please come and do this. And like I said, when I was freaking out, I said, Jenny, where is your sister? I want her to come and take over and tell me what to do. <laughs> she can do it. She can do it. She's invited us. She lives in as far west as you can get in North Carolina and as far north in Ashe County. Her, uh, she and her husband have Christmas tree farms, 600 acres in, in Ashe County. And uh, she is beautiful, talented. You're going to love her personality. She will love you. You will love her. And she's going to take us through the weekend along with Jenny is going to be, do some of the emceeing and also Diane. And uh, you're going to love this woman. She has uh, two children. She has a son just married and a daughter that's in Chicago going to seminary that I talk with occasionally. Yeah. And her Daddy is Ed, who's not here, but will be, and he plays the piano. So there, Dad. He's going to sit in that soft chair yes. over there. And I decided that since it was empty, somebody needed to sit in that's it tonight. Good, so that's good, Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Come on, Dad. Now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. I'm going to do that one. I wanna, uh, it won't work. That thing, I think it worked. Well, we are thrilled to death. That each and every one of you are here tonight. We see Jesus in your faces. We know what the Lord has done for us through each and every one of you all. Uh, he gave us uh, some wonderful trips to your all's homes. We've been to your homes and, and you've loved us as, as the Lord Jesus Christ loves us. And my daughter's put together a presentation that I would like for us to watch because it's got some wonderful music and some wonderful pictures before I start uh, with what I have to say to you. And so she's going to turn this on and start this. We'll make sure you can see it. I might have to turn that one light out there. So... We are excited about this this weekend. We want uh, each and every person here to give of themselves so that 
the Lord can give back to you. <laughs> the Lord told Sylvia <laughs> the other day at the grocery store, said, give everything away. And so Sylvia came on to me and she says, the Lord said, give everything away. And I said, well, you might as well because, I mean, you know, uh, it's his anyway, so give it all away. And we found out that we can't because he keeps replenishing it too much. <laughs> so that's the way it is. You know, we, we, we give our lives and we give what what he's given us to you all and to everyone. And, and so this weekend, we're asking you particularly to give of yourself because there's someone here that needs to hear from you. We've had many a sessions to where we get together and people will say the next year, oh, what you said to me was so helpful for me. Well, you know, you never know what you're going to say because the Lord's saying it. But he knows what other people need to hear. Are you ready? Lord, we've been knowing your presence all day. That's been certain. You're the living person here this evening. And you have your own wonderful ways by you, which you speak by your spirit and by your word and by human lips to our hearts. And so you will speak tonight. Jesus Christ will be magnified.
You can see why I wanted you to see that. How God has blessed my wife and I with all of you. And the main reasons so that you can be blessed by giving yourself to each other. And that's what's happened all these years. We've done this tent and the places we've gone. And that's what's happened to my daughter and my grandchildren. And there was a picture of my brother there, and he's been on death's bed for the last two weeks. And God has brought him back around because of your prayers. We put him on the Internet as soon as we heard he drove himself to the hospital. And they put him right in there and did four artery bypass and the valve and everything. And he was on death's bed. And he doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is that necessary. So we've prayed for his salvation, and the Lord has restored his life to where he'll know that Jesus Christ. And he told me, we went to see him, and he told me he was ready to go. I said, I don't think you are, son, brother. I don't think you're ready to go yet, not until you know Jesus. So those pictures show you what a blessing the Lord has done for us. What he's, you know, because we have laid it all out for everybody. The Lord showed me some months back of a person who had a terrible wound on their arm. They'd slashed their arm open with a knife. And they were so embarrassed and everything, they didn't want anybody to see it, so they covered it up and hid it. Wouldn't let anybody see it. Wouldn't tell anybody about it. Because, see, that's our broken lives that we, you know, that's happened to us when we try to hide those things. What happens? It, it, it festers and gets worse, doesn't it? But when we bear the witness of the, of the wound out to the world, then the world feeds, nurtures, and, and dresses that, and, and, and it heals, doesn't it? And that's what God does when we give him the broken hearts that we have and the problems that we've had in our lives. You know, he's healed those things. Uh, my life, I could tell you many a stories, and there's no one in this room probably that couldn't tell you some some stories where God has healed the wounds and the brokenness of their of their of their lives because they were courage, had courage enough to, to lay it out there for for Him, or get you know get get help through ministry or whatever. So that's that's my prayer for each and everybody here. I think we're here for a purpose. I believe everyone has, as Norman used to tell us, he, you know, you've chose to come, you've chose to come here. So, well, I believe you've chose to give of yourself, and um, you know, we don't always know what to say, but we just say what the Lord has for us to say, and he, it's really in the hearing. The Lord is dealing with what you hear, because He will have you speak of something you wonder why i went there you know why i said that but it was for somebody else because see god's in the people business he's not in the business of building houses and and having property and all this stuff he's in the people business that's what he's all about and the lord gave us that house there for one dollar he didn't tell us the the uh any deals about it or anything he just says well i said lord you give me that house, and I will put it back together. He said, okay, brother, there it is. And for about two years, I carried that whole house around on my shoulders in the wreck and the mess that it was in because I was going to put it back together. And then I finally realized, Lord Jesus, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> I can't do anything without you. You're going to put it back together by faith. And that's how it, and, I, and you're going to show us how to do it. We didn't have any money, and so we were just working on it ourselves. But we'd come down here and not get anything done. You know, it was just a huge job. So he said, go to one room. Don't look at anything else. Just work on that one room, one little thing. And that's what he that's what he wants in our lives when you know things are falling apart like my brothers in Lexington right now and I've claimed him for the Lord Jesus Christ 
He wants me to lift him up to, to him. I cannot save my brother. I cannot. But Jesus can. And I trust Jesus with everything. Even my wife. I trust him with my wife. Can you imagine? <laughs> that doesn't seem fair to put her on him, does it? <laughs> but so we just wanted to show you what a blessing we have had in all the things that we do. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ has got some wonderful words for you this weekend. But there's a there's a catch, a catch to it all. You have to receive it. And then you have to dare to believe it. And then you have to dare to take it for yourself. The truth that he's going to give you this weekend. The words that these people are going to speak right out of the word, right out of the Bible. You have to take it for yourself. Believe it. And then trust the Lord Jesus Christ for it. When everything else looks crazy. When everything else looks the opposite. Because let me tell you people, Satan is no fool. He's not going to just let you run off and do your own thing and not come with you at temptations. Showed me some years ago. I asked the Lord Jesus, I said, Lord, why can't you just put a force field around me and not let Satan come at me so hard? And he just come and bounce off, you know, and I won't have to deal with all these temptations and all this stuff that's hitting me. He said, oh, Scotty, he said, if I did that, you wouldn't need me. Think about it for a second. You would have your own protection. You wouldn't need me. And I saw at that moment that the temptations and the things that happen to us are opportunities to see what Jesus Christ is going to do next. An opportunity. See, opportunities are a chance for something wonderful to happen. You see? So that's how he's taking things that happen to us. What is this? Sharon called up one day and told Sylvia, he said, oh, I'm so depressed. Sylvia said, that's great. Be depressed today. Oh, can I do that? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she called back and says, I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> you know? So it is, you know, terrible things do happen to us. Jim back here had some terrible surgery and stuff, and he was he was pretty seriously ill. But there's there went up for him prayers unbelievable, like there has been for my brother. We put my brother on the Internet, and we got a response that there was like 50 people praying for my brother, and he didn't even know it. But Jim knew people were praying for him. You know, and that's where the healing came for Jim and for all of us. That's where the healings come for me. I had to apologize to my children here um, one uh, Father's Day or something that I didn't know Jesus back when they were being raised. And uh, my youngest daughter, she said, Oh, Dad, that's all right. And my wife says, Shut up. Let him apologize. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> so, you know, I made a lot of mistakes when I was raising my children. So I see the, the deal where, you know, I'm raising my children as a man doing the maybe just the best I know how and kind of like God is trying to raise me up you know okay you fell down again get up let's go have you ever tried to have a child help you do something it's more trouble than it's worth <laughs> and I think of the Lord I said you know we're trying to help the Lord do something it's a wonder he didn't say it's more trouble than it's worth I'll do it myself but he doesn't he loves us too much he dares to to stick you know stick with us and use us as his vessels and his agents I just praise the Lord for each and every one of you all that have chosen to come here. Know that you're here for a special reason. Not only are you going to receive a wonderful blessing for yourself, but you are going to give wonderful blessing for others. All you have to do is talk to somebody, just be with somebody, just care. <laughs> I'm looking at Paul here. We went, we went to Wilmington. And uh, traveled all over the country. And he put about 3,000 miles in his, out on his truck. We traveled all over the country. I was afraid he was going to go to sleep. And Sylvia and I was in the car ahead of him. And he was traveling all over. And I said, Lord, you've got to give that man a special blessing. I said, look at all the trouble he's gone to to find out what you're all about. You know, 
And, of course, he did. Paul got a wonderful spirit, and we did too. And um, I thought, I come home here and have a hard time getting people to come just live down the block, come over to see what the Lord's got for them, you know. But that's his business there. We don't fret over anything like that. We don't fret. So we just praise the Lord for Paul. Praise the Lord for each and every one of you are the here. I hope you enjoyed the music and what Diane put together for you. And just wanted a, you know, a special, wonderful welcome. But remember, the Lord's got something special for you, so listen to the words. I know back when I was working 14 million hours a day, Sylvia was going to see Norman 14 million hours a day. And I was working 14 million hours a day. She just kept going back and just kept going back. I said, what do you say? Well, I don't know. I can't understand anybody. I know it's true. You know, I know it's the truth. I know it's truth. Well, what is it? I don't know, but I, I know it's there. You know, because he, he talked kind of, uh, you know, it, it, in a rough Bill Byer can tell us exactly how he talked, and, and you can't understand what he was saying, but he, he knew it was truth because it wasn't trying to, to do something. It was being. It was being who God made you to be. Do you dare to believe it? Do you dare to believe it? I had a hard time with that. You know, I'm in the kitchen one day, and I'm working on the pipes underneath the kitchen sink, and I hate to say some of the words that I had to say about the pipes because I couldn't get them to break loose. You know, the nuts were tight and everything. And Mom says, Dad, don't curse the pipes. Bless the pipes. The heck with these pipes, you know. Bless the pipes, Dad. Bless the pipes. Well, okay, bless the doing pipes now. Bless the pipes. All right. Well, it came loose, you know. Wait a minute. What's this? What's this? Okay, the pipes came loose. Hmm. I didn't know the Lord could bless pipes. So I'm up there in my building and I'm working on all kinds of stuff and I lose this little metric screw. I don't have one of these. They're metric, you know. We don't make them in the United States. Anyway, I need this little screw to put my car back together. Lord Jesus, you know where that screw is. You do. It's there somewhere. And I find the screw. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And then he says, if I can help you find the smallest of screws, can I help you with the other things in your life? Can I be the other things in your life? Oh, yes, Lord, you can. You are. That is my life right now, you know. And my son, David, and all of you, too. Because, see, you all are ministering up to us, to Sylvia and I. And everyone that's here, you all are ministering to them. I saw a long time ago, it wasn't what the preacher said, but it's what it's being heard that God's dealing with. It's what's being received and taken in and believed and to be believed and to live by. You know? That's what that's what it's about. I saw a a huge like a Grand Canyon type of a of a chasm, a vision of this. Huge thing. You couldn't go down this. And you couldn't go across it. But on the other side was life, liberty, and everything. On the other side. And I said, Lord Jesus, my goodness, how do you get to the other side? He said, I am your bridge. And you dare to step out on me. Hmm. Everything's there. So I stepped out over the side and I was supported. And as I took the next step, I was supported more. And the more that I believed that Jesus Christ could hold me, then I was able to see that it was a steel bridge going across the thing. That it was capable of supporting the world. You see, that's faith. That's how Peter or Paul, whichever one of them walked on the water. One of them did, walked out there on the water. He did. It was about faith. Peter walked on the water. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants you to dare to put your support onto him like Jenny and every one of us are putting our support onto that chair. You trust that chair? Well, trust me. That's what it's all about. 
And everybody in this tent can testify to that, how God has supported them in the, in the problems that's, that's come about. So, we just welcome and welcome and welcome you. Thank you and thank you and thank you for being here with us. Sylvia's going to bring a message, and we want y'all to receive it. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> so we just just praise you and, and thank you for being here with us. And we thank everybody. Ken is back there in the back. I don't, we didn't get to talk about Ken. He's back there hiding behind this keyboard thing that he's uh, operating back there. And that's how I'm able to talk to this machine, this, this stick here because he's back there. And he's going to have to come out here. Because he's the only one mom didn't talk to. The other one, Paul. I thought about Paul. What Dad was talking about, Paul was our groupie for a while. Paul. (laughs) Paul. Okay. This is our, these are our two sons. We've got so many sons. I don't know how Dad and I ever did it. I don't know how Dad and I ever did this. But we had so many sons and daughters, we don't know what to do. All right. Yeah, we were. Okay, <laughs> this one, Paul Chapman. He's from North Carolina. He, tell me the city. Morrisville. Morrisville, near yeah. Cary. Near Cary. But anyway, we met him. He heard me on the radio at work, and he just, oh, boy, he just heard me for two, three years. Pretty soon I, he emailed me. I called him and said, I'm coming, and we met, and he's our son. We had a seminar in our RV, didn't we, Paul? We sure did for yeah. four days. Four days at, with Dad and mm. our good friend, um, Pat. Pat Smith. It's Pat Smith. Pat right. Smith. Thank you. All right. So anyway, the next time we came to North Carolina, he said, uh, "I want to come where you are." Well, we went down to uh, Concord. A friend of ours, Lewis, lives down there, mm-hmm. and he drove down in his t- truck. And then we said, "We're going to go to Wilmington." Well, I'm going to Wilmington. So he followed us in his truck to Wilmington. I said, "Wait a minute." You're a groupie. Yeah, we're a groupie. So then we decide to go to Nashville. He follows us to Nashville. And then from Nashville, we said, we're coming up to Louisville. I'm coming up to Louisville. Okay, come on. So he followed us all over the country. So this this man, he's a great man, and he's got lots of things to say, and I want you all to get to know him. Pretty handsome too, right? <laughs> okay, this precious one over here, Ken Neal. Maybe you all remember his wife, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Ken and Caitlin came last year, and they also, well, let's see, Caitlin's been, no, you all came the first time to the Steve Pettit conference, is that right? Yes, right. Okay. And then, yeah, that's that's right. He's in New Jersey, from New Jersey, and, uh, but Dad and I are going to go to Pennsylvania in June, and we're going up to his house, and maybe his church, and we're going to see what the Lord's Mm going to do. Yes, but indeed. And today is our 10th wedding anniversary. Oh, well. I love you, beloved one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> 10th wedding anniversary. Right. Ken is our audio technician. David just said, I'm going to give you that job, and you have all the authority to do the audio. And he says, oh, good. He also is a great musician. He's a singer, so we're going to have some fun. You know what? Usually we have some Nashville um, entertainment. Well, this year. We're not going to, but um, we will next time because they're all getting ready. They're all going to come back next time. But anyway, because they're all on tour, doing something, whatever they're doing. So anyway, this thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. All back the way to work. Back to work. Go back to work. He, this is the cameraman. <laughs>